We live in a very strange time to be alive. This is for multiple reasons. A lot of things that are just historically unprecedented, which is a word that I'm becoming increasingly more and more tired of saying and hearing. But uh, one of the ways that we are able to view this is through the way that people on the internet use just about everything as an opportunity to be upset, to be outraged. And the most recent um, opportunity that they've stumbled into is the matter of Hogwarts Legacy. If you aren't familiar, or if you've been living under a rock, that's kind of the same thing, the Harry Potter universe is about to expand its lore again. And it's actually going backwards this time where Hogwarts Legacy takes place some like 100 years or 200 years prior to the events of Harry Potter itself. And that it's going to be this open world Skyrim-esque type sandbox game where you attend classes, where you learn things um, in the universe and blah, blah, blah. And this is something that's important to me for a couple of, or maybe three, incisive ways. The first is that I grew up in the 90s. And at that time, I also grew up in a very Pentecostal, Assemblies of God environment. And there was very strong opinions about Harry Potter back then. That the last books hadn't actually been released yet, and the first feature-length films were coming out. And they had promotional partnerships with Coca-Cola, Scholastic, etc. And my mom was one of many across this country, including John Hagee, etc., who boycotted those promotional partners, Coca-Cola, Scholastic, I don't know who else, as a means of trying to voice their displeasure with the existence of Harry Potter as an intellectual property, saying that kids were learning how to do magic, and you, if you were alive at the time, regardless of your generation, if you were alive at the time, you remember it. And so, this happened, and I was on the outer circle, I guess you could say, of it. I, I read the first book, and I watched the first movie, and I just, it wasn't for me. The second reason that this is incisive of my interest is that my wife is a diehard fan. She is very affectionate towards Harry Potter and all of its intellectual property uh, that her and friends have done the online fan fiction role play type stuff together and um, they originally had plans to go to the Universal Studios um, when they were opening the Hogwarts um, display, right? And so um, all of that is true. That um, so I I don't know. Um, the third thing is that I re recently experienced the outrage of the internet in a more intimate fashion because. Um, somebody that I saw on the internet was talking about how that it's, it causes people harm to utilize what is considered to be socially insensitive stereotypes, racially insensitive stereotypes, ethnic stereotypes in your RPG elements. So talking about Dungeons and Dragons and whatever. And, um that those things can actually cause harm to people living in today's society, and I was contending against that. I'm a huge Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, etc., role-playing, and um, we've used all kinds of different systems in that, from Star Wars-based to Star Trek-based to just general horror to Mutants and Masterminds, Dungeons & Dragons, uh, whatever. I'm a big fan of that stuff, and I'm a big fan also of not putting restrictions on my players a whole lot. I want them to be able to do whatever they want, um, as long as they're not causing literal physical bodily harm to another person in the room, and that they're not causing, or they're not doing like direct character assassination attacks 
against other people in the room or you know, like there's some reasonable boundaries in place but for the most part somebody wants to use a goofy sounding voice or if they want to use uh, if they want to gender bend a character or if they actually want to race bend a character or if they want to whatever I'm not, I don't put a lot of restrictions on that stuff and I think I want people to use as much of their imagination in every context as possible and so that's the argument that I was making that's the direction I was coming from on it well people got mad and one of the directions that they got mad about that in as an example was the uh, JK Rowling that she's a turf that she's racist that she's anti-semitic etc and I kept coming back at that with that how first if you pulled up two subreddits side by side one would be that she's a hero in fact that she's received awards recognitions from Holocaust organization memorial organizations rec and awareness campaign organizations that she's de produced a content through Harry Potter that actually depicts Jewish archetyping and stereotyping in a positive light that they say that well the the wizarding world being that they are this occlusive sub society or internal society within an outward society that they are uh, that they have powers they are chosen type people powers that are supernatural in origin that they use them as much as possible for the good of everyone around them and that uh, they harbor this sacred knowledge that they uh, protect from that they're always like one generation away from uh, being wiped off the face of the earth and all this kind of stuff like that's that they've interpreted that in a manner that well these are the Jews that they're talking about and there are people that would disagree and that they'll say that no the goblins are this sort of anti-semitic stereotype etc and you know whatever like people just like if two people are pointing at the same thing and they are interpreting it in diametrically opposing fashion only one of them can be right not both of them so who do we go with and the way the internet has done as the Hogwarts Legacy video game comes online and is is going live as we speak for early and um, pre-order purchasing what I'm finding is that people would rather believe the most negative things rather than going through and uh, doing their own research rather than and they always morally virtue signal about it um, I've seen several that's where a person's like, I guess I just care about the lives of trans kids more than I care about uh, 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 Hogwarts GTA or Harry Potter GTA and things like this to try to trivialize other people's interests. Stuff where they're like, well, I'll just spoil the ending then. And just being really petty and really childish about the whole thing. And to me... I don't know I don't know I just I don't find anything respectable about that first of all I don't find very much about that that's worthy of respect but it wouldn't really matter if it involved trans kids it wouldn't really matter if it involved um, racial or ethnic stereotypes it seems like the people that are upset about this, to me, this is my perspective, this people that are upset about this always have something to be upset about. And that it's almost, you might say, equal opportunity. That they don't require a whole lot of uh, um, prerequisites to be upset about something. They're just constantly outraged about everything it's something that comes up actually in screw tape letters of all things that was written by c.s lewis in 1946 or 42 um, 
that it's one of the advisory strategies prescribed by screw tape to his mentee demon tempter named wormwood that he wants to at the end of all things to prescribe to, to figure out ways to get people to be outraged about things because when they become outraged they become less rational and by being less rational they are less open to um, the the works of God essentially that uses um, antithetical um, kind of artistry uh, interpretive language but saying that God is less capable or you might say that people are less able or prone to being um, brought into the kingdom of God when they are irrational that they're in emotional states that they are um, that these things act as better defensive mechanisms than actual argumentation that people don't need to be convinced of I don't know evolution or um, they don't need to be convinced that God doesn't exist they don't need to be convinced of anything like a uh, resembling pagan theology they don't even need to be convinced that Christian theology is false what they need is to be g gathered up into their emotions into irrational outrage politics etc and if that if you can get people to center their lives on such things that the, they'll do the work themselves that it'll actually require less effort on the part of the demonic tempters and that they can almost act that it almost acts as auto run scripts for NPCs that they'll have the pre-prescribed responses uploaded into their psyche through this outrage politics etc that the demons can just kind of let them do their own thing that they'll literally be able to carry that momentum from uh, from that point on and that they will spin them themselves into hell without really all that much effort on the part of the individual companies that they can focus more on social activist type temptation gathering only leaders of thoughts because people on an individual level will have stopped thinking on their own now of course screw tape letters is a work of fiction but one of the most clever things about a lot of works of fiction is how much they're really not fictional that they mirror aspects of our real reality in some really clever and you might say um, fascinating ways and so um, if you want to play Hogwarts Legacy you should do it just go and do it like don't let other people decide for you what you're allowed to like and dislike and if you don't want to like it fine I, I'll never play it I'll probably get my wife a copy but I'll never play it because it's just not my niche. I'm just not a fan. But for for realsies, you don't need other people to tell you what to like and not like. And you should be very suspicious anytime somebody says that liking a piece of fiction or purchasing aspects or the products of a piece of fiction puts other human beings in danger actual living breathing other human beings in danger you should be very suspicious of those claims especially when we're not talking about a physical commodity we're not talking about lithium ion batteries that require cobalt that are basically the products of slave mines in Africa we're not talking about that kind of stuff we're talking about a piece of we're talking about ones and zeros saved onto either a cartridge or a disc somewhere so just something to consider is that you don't need other people's permission to like things. You also don't need other people's condemnation
for liking those things either. So, if you want to like it, like it. And if you don't want to like it, don't like it.